Hello everyone. So in this video, I thought we would go over the merge sort algorithm. Uh, this is a, another sorting algorithm. Obviously, this one is relatively efficient. Uh, up here, we can see in my notes that we have that the time complexity for this algorithm, the worst case scenario, is O n log n. Um, that's a relatively good computing time for algorithms. Um, and then the, the high level idea behind this algorithm is that we are going to sort an array by splitting arrays. And then once we have them split down into individual digits, we are going to merge them back together, uh, building up from single digits back to the full array now in order uh, from lowest to highest values. So that's just kind of the general high level concept behind this algorithm. Um, so we go down here, you can see that we actually are going to be making two separate functions to get this job done. One is the actual merge sort algorithm, and then the other one is the merge algorithm that will be used within the merge sort function. So if we uh, go over our pseudocode in the comments here real quick, we can see that basically we're going to want to check if the array can be split. So if there's multiple values in the array, if there's a single value, then obviously it can't be split and it's ready to go. So if it can be split, what we're going to do next is we're going to get the middle index. Um, this may not always be a, an exact middle. For example, uh, if you have two uh, values in an array, so index of zero, index of one, there's no way to actually have a middle value there, but you will see how we handle those cases here soon. Um, and then after that, we're going to actually go ahead and split the array into the two sides based off of that middle index value that we just got. And then once we have uh, the array split into two sides, we're going to then use recursion, which I'll talk a little bit more about when we get to it, um, to continue splitting the array should they be large enough to continue to split. Uh, so that's the basic of what the merge sort function here is going to do. Uh, and then down here, the merge function, what it's going to do is start off by creating a new array. And then once we have that ready, we're going to check if uh, either array, I'm going to actually reward this so it's a little more clear, if either the left array or right array is empty, that's referring to the parameters right here. We're going to pass in the left side of the array and we're going to pass in the right side of the array. Um, if either of those uh, are not empty, we can find the lower value between the two of them. And then based off of that, we can either add the left value or add the right value to this new array that we've created back up here. Um, after that, what we're going to want to do is start to merge our arrays back together. So we're going to merge the left side of the array. We're going to merge the right side of the array. And then ultimately, we're going to return our result array, which should be our sorted algorithm. So. Like I said, this is just high level. If this doesn't fully make sense at this point, that's fine. Uh, typically, it, it makes more sense once you start seeing the code. So with that, let's start writing some code. So we're going to start right here. And we're going to check to see if an array can be split. We can do that very simply with just a, a conditional if statement. So we're going to take the passed in array. We're going to take its length and see if it's less than two because if it's a single digit, that's the only use case where it can't be split because um, ideally we're not going to be dealing with an empty array. So it's either going to have a single value, in which case it can't be split, or it's going to be greater than a single value, in which case it can. But if it's less than two, like we said, we're going to go ahead and just return that array. So that's what that line of code is doing. Uh, relatively simple. Next, we're going to want to see what happens if we pass this check. If it is greater than two, we're going to want to try to find the middle index. We're going to want to store this in a variable that we'll just call middle. Uh, I chose to use a const because that helps maintain the uh, data. We know it won't be changed. And for each iteration through this function, it, we won't want it to be changed. So to get this, we're going to start with math.floor. And if you're unfamiliar with this, uh, math is a object in JavaScript that you just have access to. You can use it in any of your JavaScript code. And then floor is a method on the math object. And what that will do is round a value down. So 
in our situation, like we said earlier, if you have a value of, let's say, um, four, or no, it'd be three. Yeah, if we have three items in an array, uh, to split that, we're going to end up getting 1.5. We're going to go ahead and floor that down to one, and we'll have one side heavier than the other. So you'll see that here soon, but we're going to want to take the array length and just divide that by two. So like I say, if we had an array of three values, so the length is three, divide three by two, we get 1.5, and then math.floor would round that down to where the middle would be one. So that's just a quick example of what that line is doing. Once we have our middle value, we can then split the array into two sides. So we're going to want to start with the left side here. And with that, all you have to do is take the array, and then we can use the built-in slice method. Um, this will take two parameters, the start index here, and then the end index, which we will want to end at the middle value. So that'll give us the left side of the array. And then we're gonna want the right side of the array. We're gonna do the same basic thing here. We're gonna take array, and use the slice method. Only this time, we're gonna do a start at the middle index, and then we're gonna end at the length of the array so that everything that's left. So that'll give us, now we have our middle index and based off of that we can split the overall array into a left side and a right side. Okay, last thing we need to do here for the merge sort function is just return our value. But this is where the recursions come in. So let me type this out and then I'll go over what the code's actually doing. Um, we're gonna wanna call the merge function that we're about to create after this. And it's going to take in two parameters. As you see right here, we've got a left side and we've got a right side. But like I said, we're going to want to split these down to the most basic values possible. So we're actually going to call merge sort within the merge sort function. And we're going to pass in the left side. That's going to be the left parameter. And the right parameter is going to be the same thing. It's going to be merge sort called again on the right side. There we go. So now that what this is, this is what recursion is, is uh, we're calling a method inside of a method. So it will go inside of itself until we reach this base case here. When we get it down to that single value like we want, it will then return just the sole array and will no longer be calling merge sort inside of itself it will break that recursive loop so that's why we're calling that inside of itself is just to continue to break it down and break it down and break it down until we have that single value so to complete this we're going to need the merge function as you see here and like we said we want to start off by creating a new array we're going to call it the result and we're just going to make that a empty array for now Next, we're going to want to check to see if either the left array or the right array is empty. We're going to do this uh, through a while loop. We're going to do while, and then the conditions for this is going to be left.length and right.length. So I actually need to change that. I'm sorry. So we're going to see if they're, if either the right the left and the right away are empty. We need both of them to have length to them. So we're going to open up this loop and as you can probably guess from my indenting here, this is where this pseudocode is going to fall. So I'm going to just throw that in there real quick. And we're going to want to find the lower value. We can do this by another conditional statement like we did up above. Uh, and what we're going to want to do is check the value of the left index, just the uh, starting value there. And then we're going to want to see if that is less than or equal to the right value of the same side. So now then, we're going to want to take this. And if the left value is in fact lower than the right value, we're going to take result. We're going to push, which is another array method that uh, just adds the value to the array. And what we're going to want to add is left.shift. 
And what shift is going to do, the syntax highlighting will pull it up. So I, not really. Um, what this is going to do is it's going to pop out a value from this left array. It's actually going to get it off of this array and then it's going to push it into this array. So we're shortening this length while increasing this length, just exchanging the value from one place to the other. If that is not the case, and it turns out that the right value is the lower value, we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to pull the value from the right side of the array. Awesome. So we're going to pop this back up here, and I'm actually apologize once you get this that's not going there. So that's going to be our first while loop. Bring this up real quick. So if I can type today, there we go. So now then, we're going to start merging these arrays that we've now sorted back together. We'll do this with another while loop. So while left has length to it, we're going to want to take the result, do same type of thing, left dot shift. All right. And then as you can probably guess for the merge on the right side, it's going to be exactly the same. Only we're going to do it, like I said, to the right side. So right dot link. Result dot push, right dot shift. All right, and then we're going down here, and all we're going to want to do is return the result. So if we follow this through the logic here, we're going to return result from the merge. So that's what should be returned right here, because merge is going to go through, sort this, and then send it back through the merge, go down return that result, and it's just going to be the cycle. So, so you can see here we have the merge sort invocation, and then we've got the array of numbers right here. Clearly not in order, got a couple of duplicate fives, and then we go basically between one and ten values. So if we run this, oh, I'm going to have to, sorry, log this because I forgot I'm going to repl it. So console.log, now we're just going to pop on all the way over there. Yeah. So if we run this, you can see now that we have one, three, four, five, five, seven, ten. So it works. But what is it doing, right? So let's uh, go through and see what some of this code is doing. So we're gonna start with merge sort. What I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna console log right here above the return, and we're going to label this as the split and I just want to log the left side and the right side okay and we're gonna run this okay and now we can start to visualize our code a little bit so as I said up here we're going to go check and see if the array is less than two. It's not because it has uh, seven values. So we're going to get the middle index and then we're going to want to split it. All right. So we split the left side and we split the right side. And that's what we're logging here. So I'm going to scroll back down here so we can see we've got this array. And like I said, there's an odd number. So we decided to put the weight on the right side of the array. And that's why we end up with this first split here. So we have 537, 537, and then 10415, 10415. And then what we do is we're going to pass that into merge. And this is where the recursion comes in, is we take this first half, because we're passing it first on the left side. And it's going to go through and it's going to run this function again, splitting it once again, putting the weight on the right. So we have 5 and 37, just like that. Well, we're going to go through once again with the recursion and we're going to pass the left side, but this time it's a single value. It's five. That's less than two. So it returns that array. And then we move on to certain the right side, which is now three, seven, the three, seven gets split into their individual values. Both of those go with this check right here. So both of those get returned. That completes the initial left side sort. 
Remember, there's recursion, so there's going to be multiple lefts and multiple rights. But when we get down to this point, we do the initial right side sort, which is going to take this. We're going to start breaking it down. We got 10 and 4 and 1 and 5. And then it breaks the left side down again, 10 and 4. Those are now down to the individual. And then we got 1 and 5. Break those down to 1 and 5. So that's what's working there. I'm going to comment that out for just a second before we put all of it together. Now we're going to see what the merge function is doing. And what we're going to do is just console log the result. And I'll actually label this as result for clarity purposes in just a second when we do put it all together. So if we run it again, we can see that we start putting things together. We got 37, we got 357, 410, 15, and I got. 1, 4, 5, 10, which would be 1, 4, 5, 10, then 1, 3, 4, 5, 5, 7, 10. That's the fully sorted array. So let's run this one more time now with both the split and the result being logged so we can see the full picture here. So what we're doing, we're splitting the initial array, and then we split the left side, and then we split the right side of that left side. So we've got the values five, three, and seven. These three values have been all the way split down. And then we start building it back up with three, seven, and then we build three, five, seven. So that's the first recursion. And then we go through and we're gonna split down the second side, the first right. That's gonna be 10, four, one, five from right here. And we're gonna get the 10, four. And from that, we're gonna merge those back together into four, 10. And we're going to split this into 1, 5, merge it back into 1, 5 because it happens to be in order. And then we're going to take and merge 1, 5 and 4, 10, which gives us 1, 4, 5, 10. And then finally, we take 1, 4, 5, 10, and then we merge it up here with the 3, 5, 7 that we got earlier. And that gives us our final result of 1, 3, 4, 5, 5, 7, and 10. So I hope this was helpful. Um, see if I can't find a way to pull all this together for you to see the code. Um, I am going to leave the comments though. I think I can reduce the font a little bit. I don't, and that's about the best I'm going to be able to do there. Um, so here's where you can pause the video if you just want to go over the entire code for this, uh, which I'll leave a link to this replit in the description below. Thank you for watching this. I hope this was helpful. Um, if you all have any specific algorithms you would like me to go over, please leave that in the comments below. And until then, I will see you next time.